everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. I am here filming at the end of June with a box I have received from Olive. If you don't know Olive, over to Book Olive. She is only one of the coolest nonfiction booktubers on booktube, but also someone who I consider a role model in this community. She reads tons of fascinating books and I love that we have some common ground in some food writing and also in the animal and nature science realm. So I asked her um, if she wanted to collaborate. So this collaboration is a long time coming. I'm so, so excited. The idea is that we sent each other books and other goodies that would remind us and inspire us based on farmers markets, summer bounty, cultivation, and etc. So her box just arrived I think two days ago and mine just came yesterday. So for this portion of the video, because this vlog will be in pieces, I'm gonna unopen, I'm gonna unopen, I'm gonna unbox here and then future snippets, clips from this will be the reading vlog. Um, of me experiencing all of these goodies. So first we'll start with the card. Let's see if you guys can see it. There you go. I'm not going to read it out loud for you guys. She sent tons of Pittsburgh goodies, which is where Olive is from, which I think is amazing. I tried to get her only things from the local farmer's market right around the street from me in Buffalo, New York. Now, obviously the books aren't from there, but I really am excited to see a little bit of her world. Oh my gosh, so first, Pittsburgh Honey from the Fall Bloom. Mr. Rogers Encourage Mints. Oh, so you guys remember Mr. Rogers, I'll bring this up to the camera, but Mr. Rogers from Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, she brought me, let's see if I can, come on, come on. Oh, it's hard because of the reflection, but, Mr. Rogers. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Okay, Olive, you've already sent me way too many goodies and now I wish I had sent you more, um, but I'm super excited to see what she thinks of it because one of the items I worked really hard to find, it's a it was a mushroom beverage because I know Olive's been currently obsessed with reading a lot about mushrooms. So I'm really hoping she likes that. Steel City Salt Company, black and gold blend are simply delicious, sweet and smoke, uh, smoky and sweet lemon pepper is perfect for grilling, roasting, and sauteing. Whether it's for game day or every day, this blend does the trick. It's hand mixed with hickory smoked salt, lemon peel, garlic, orange peel, onion, telly cherry, black pepper, I've never even heard of telly cherry, cane sugar, smoked paprika, cumin, chipotle, and turmeric. Huh, this is so cute. I'm super, super excited. Um, what do you, can I get you open? Can I smell you? <laughs> oh, smells good. I'm gonna put this on some kind of chicken. Okay, next we have Basil, mint, and sage. What is this? Is this a candle? I think it's a candle. <gasps> it is from North Ave Candles. So let me bring this up to you guys. Look how cute this is. Apparently it will um, go for two and a half hours. How cute, it's a decomposition notebook, but it looks all like bees. I love this. Love that it's small. And oh my gosh, Olive, where did you get this wrapping paper? Because I want some. Like, look at this, it's so stinking cute. I really, I need to know where she got this. Maybe I should just, I'm just gonna stand right here for a second. Oh my gosh, Olive, 
have you actually got me a book I don't have? Um, Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, a memoir. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I genuinely don't have that book. Oh, how funny. Oh my gosh, I love this. Um, Buzz, The Nature of Bees and Necessities. Now, I have to laugh. I have, okay, back in my chair. Um, I have to, okay, back in my chair. First, Olive, thank you so much for all of this stuff. There's so much to try and I can't wait. I'm really excited about, well, I'm excited about all of it, but the Mr. Rogers mints are my favorite thing because it's so stinking cute. And it's from the Unemployed Philosopher's Guide. I, I just really enjoy this. Um, the Little Mint Candle, even the card, like Olive, a, a step above. It's so you in the best way possible. I'm, I wish I could articulate this well. It just feels very Olive. It feels eloquent and elegant and just well thought out. I'm super excited because I don't own either of these books, which when you're a booktuber getting books for another booktuber, I feel like that's always a risk you run. And I am really excited. I have a memoir and then I have a book about bees, which I was laughing earlier because I also sent her about a book about bees um, that she didn't actually have, which I was so nervous. Buzz. Bees are like oxygen, ubiquitous, essential, and for the most part, unseen. To know the bee isn't just to understand a fascinating and beautiful insect, it is to glimpse it is to glimpse a profound web of relationships, great and small, that unite the human and the natural worlds. In Buzz, award-winning author and biologist Thor Hansen unspools a yard stretching back 125 million years and encompassing well-known honeybees and bumbles, as well as lesser-known diggers, miners, leaf cutters, and masons. He shows the reader how central bees are to our harvest and mythologies and our very existence. Now that they've given us sweetness, how they've given us sweetness and light, the beauty of flowers, and much and as much as a third of the foodstuffs we eat. And alarmingly, he shows us why they're at risk of disappearing. In short, Buzz shows us why all bees are wonders to celebrate and protect. Once you read this book, you'll never overlook them again. I'm super excited, and I promise this like wasn't intentional in timing. I actually just ordered a little bee hotel to put in my backyard um, so that single bees or bees that need to rest can rest in the bee hotel and continue to um, pollinate my garden that I'm growing. So I'm really excited. I will, hopefully that comes this weekend and I can vlog and start this book too. So I'm definitely gonna start with Buzz because I'm in inspired and the timing works out. And I'm also really excited to read this. It's almost July, so I'll technically put them on my July TBR, but I won't probably tell you guys about them. Um, I'll call them like secret project books. I am so, so excited. I have dreamed of doing a collaboration with Olive and I'm so psyched. I will see you guys in part two. Hey everyone, it's Kim. It is 11 in the morning, which wow, I can't believe how far Saturday morning's going. Um, I did not film an intro for the vlog and you'll see a different Kim at the beginning of this, but it's Saturday morning and I wanted to get started on my reading vlog this weekend. So my goal is to get through two books about bees. One's an audiobook that's seven hours long. The other is about eight and a half, but I'm going to read hardcover. Um, I actually spent the morning finishing The Summer Job, um, a fiction book where Birdie impersonates her friend Heather for the summer pretending to be a wine sommelier. And it is hilarious, highly recommended. And yes, it is fiction. I'll um, put the cover right here for you guys. So I did do some reading. I did clean up around the house. I love how I have to justify that I didn't have a wasteful Saturday, which the whole point of Saturdays are to relax. So next up, I'm going to get in my first workout of the day. I actually have two today. Um, Dan's not awake yet. So I'm going to do the first one, which is more accessories, which he hates anyway. And then I will get back to you guys later and crack open a book.
guys, it's Kim. It's, um, it's July 5th. I've decided that this reading vlog and partnership with Olive, I'm just gonna take the whole month of July to work on it because I like to jump back and forth being a mood reader. Um, but I did want to tell you guys, I did start one of the books, Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking. I couldn't sleep this morning, so I woke up at like 3.30, I think, and started it. I am about 58 pages through and uh, just got into part two which focuses on one of the other members of her family. Essentially, this writer um, came to America, has this Russian immigrant kind of story, um, but she's really trying to understand the art of the cuisine that she left behind. But I think the thing that really captured my attention with this book, very, very early in the book, she has a, she just makes a comment that, what does it mean if your earliest memories of food are not of food you've eaten, but the longing to have certain foods. So um, the author, Anya von Remsen, grew up in poverty, essentially, and there were lots of things that she wanted to eat as a little girl but didn't have access to. Um, so this, I like the subheading of this book is a memoir of food and longing because that really captured my attention what are your most powerful food memories? Are the thing are they the food that you remember eating that were delicious? Or was it the magic of this idea of a dish you've heard about that you hadn't tried yet? Um, so I'm only I'm only a little bit of the ways through, um, but I'm really, really liking it so far. Again, I'm just shocked that Olive found a book that I, I didn't own already. Um, I will read Buzz as well as part of my July TBR. My TBR went up and I mentioned that I had two more project books and those these are the two books because I didn't I didn't want to spoil what was going on. Even when I posted about the book on Instagram, I didn't actually tag Olive. Um, I just kind of said I had a project and I was enjoying it. Um, but yeah, that's my little update for now. Um, next weekend, the weekend of July 10th, Dan and I don't have anything going on. So I think there will be a reading vlog there. Um, and the following week, we're actually going camping the following weekend in the middle of not really camping. We'll call it um off the grid weekend. <laughs> we're staying at a farm where you can rent a micro or micro cabin with no Wi-Fi. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of reading done there as well. Uh, more soon, I guess. I'm really excited. Bye. Hey, guys, it's been a couple of days since I updated you, but I wanted to show off this new bookshelf I grabbed. I actually got it off of Facebook Marketplace for less than $50. And my goal is to free up some of the shelves actually in my beautiful bookcase with things that I'm collecting. So like these are all of the um, Rekuten Edible History book series. So the Edible, come on focus, there we go. The Edible series books. Um, so as you'll see, my collection of them has grown. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 of them. There's currently, I think, 36. Um, they're approaching 40 pretty soon. On the second shelf, I have, I'm starting to collect these as well. This is the History of Food by Countries, also from Rakuten and the University of Chicago Press. And these are all my autographed books. I don't have too many. A lot of them are memoirs. Um, food writing, one fiction book. And then this third shelf are the fiction books I have read. Um, almost all of them are from this year, along with some oversized books that just don't really fit in my case. And then these bottom two shelves, as I back up a little, are all the fiction books I collected but want to read. So these are like my fiction TBR. Um, this is a framed magazine cover. Um, back when I worked in film, when I was still a film student, I got the cover for my article, Willie versus Charlie, the cultural bender, the culture bending Oompa Loompa. And it's an essay that discusses how the identity of the Oompa Loompa has evolved quite a lot from the original books by Roald, Roald Dahl to this version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and then to the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory version that Johnny Depp starred in. This other book, this other magazine cover up here, um, this is another issue of Film Matters. Um, I'm not the cover, but I was published for my essay about the, the film studio Focus Features, which is a subsidiary of Universal Pictures, and how that Studio is one of the most progressive when it comes to LGBTQ plus representation in the film world. 
it's obviously been nine years since that's been published so there's a lot more representation but at the time um, they were one of the first to really open up their stories to be more diverse so it is a ladder layout as you guys can see and I just kind of love how it looks in this corner um, next to our staircase as you can see, I still plan on putting up more wedding pictures. There's like a lot of space over there. And we did get this new carpet, which really I found that the cats are more open to coming downstairs if they have carpet nearby. I'm not quite sure why, but wanted to give you guys this cute little update of one bookshelf. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like an updated bookshelf tour in general. Hi, it's now July 10th. Welcome back to this month long vlog of reading books that all have sent to me. I have less than 100 pages left of Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking. I really like this book so far. Um, I like how the author broke up food and the story by chapters and decades. And I'm in chapter, I'm in the 1980s through the shot glass, but I just finished a whole chapter about mayonnaise of my homeland and Anya, the author, is talking about how when she was a kid growing up, everyone preserved and saved their mayonnaise jars um, to carry things in. And it makes me think of like nowadays or maybe like in the last five years. Do you remember when um, mason jars became really cool and hipstery and you could get like your cocktail in a mason jar and people started to drink from mason jars? That's kind of what this mayonnaise jar reminded me of. And um, she talked about Hellman's mayonnaise coming to America and thinking Hellman's mayonnaise is disgusting, which is funny because I grew up on Hellman's mayonnaise or sometimes even Kraft Mayo, but I won't go anywhere near Miracle Whip. I think Miracle Whip is disgusting. Um, but I guess the mayonnaise in Russia is a little bit tangier and thinner. Um, the more I read in this book, and there's a whole, you know, 30 pages plus of recipes at the end of the book, the more I realize I don't know anything about Russian food. I don't think I eat a lot of Russian food. I think part of it is it's very mayonnaise heavy. Like, I like mayonnaise on a sandwich, but I don't like potato salad. I've never liked pasta salad. That kind of stuff, like, could actually invoke a gag reflex out of me when I've had to eat it. So I really don't go near it, and I'm wondering if that's why I don't like Russian food. I didn't realize caviar was part of Russian cuisine. I mean, for the, the elite. Um, but borscht and stews, that sounds like stuff Dan likes. Cause Dan likes uh, meat and potatoes. So I'm wondering if I should try to make a recipe one day in the future. Um, I know what blinis are, which are the Russian pancakes with the trimmings. Like that I remember liking. Um, what other recipes are in the back of the book? Just to name a couple. Let's see. Cornbread for Khrushchev, Mold, Moldovan cornbread with feta. Ooh, that, see now, look, that sounds good. And cornbread's something I can eat even with my gluten sensitivity. So cornbread for Khrushchev, two large eggs, two cups of milk, six tablespoons of unsalted butter for the pan, melted more for the pan for greasing, half a cup of sour cream, two cups of fine yellow cornmeal, preferably store and ground, three quarters of a cup all-purpose flour. I guess I could probably just do a one-for-one one gluten-free flour. Sugar, baking soda, baking powder, two cups grated or finely crumbled feta cheese, and roasted red pepper strips for serving. I will try that. That actually sounds quite good. Um, but like, oh my God, the one in the 1970s, I could not stand. Salat Olivier, Russian potato salad with pickles. Uh-uh. Like I can't, I, I cannot even imagine trying to eat a spoonful of that. Um, really, really not something that is appetizing to me at all. Um, but all, but in general, like I'm really enjoying the book. I've got less than 100 pages left at this point. Anya and her mother have emigrated to America, and it's really interesting to watch how her mother's embracing being in America, this new life after 40 years in Russia. But her daughter is, which is Anya, is having a much harder time, and like somehow generationally, she relates more to Stalin Russia and misses it, and her mom wants nothing to fucking do with it. It's a very interesting. It's a really interesting way that children of immigrants internalize things. Um, it's not like suddenly I'm pro some of the worst practices in Iran, but as a child of an immigrant, I am so, I have this weird calling and longing to go back to Iran, even though I have no, I have never been there. But there's such a burning desire for me to see that world and be a part of that world. I wonder if that's partially what Anya's feeling 
Um, but it's super, I keep saying it's super interesting and I wish I had more eloquent words, but it is a vlog, so I guess it's okay that I'm a little less polished. But I'm gonna try and finish this tonight. It's 5.30 on Saturday. Um, I just filmed two other videos, so I'll have that content edited and banked out. Dan's obsessed with this new zombie, very scary computer game, which I know he and my brother-in-law and friends are gonna play all night, so I will hopefully be able to get in reading. Or I'm gonna read now so I can edit later. Good plan. Okay. Couple of days since I've shown a couple of weeks since I showed you my garden. Look how high my cucumbers have gotten. Um, they're continuing to grow and I'm hoping that they'll continue to scale up. But the reason I took you guys out here is I actually got this little, it's called a bee hotel and it's meant to be a resting place for insects um, as they pollinate your yard. And since Olive got me, I thought it was such perfect timing because I had ordered this prior to actually Olive giving me that book Buzz, but I thought it really, really fit <laughs> the vlog and the reading. Um, I want to get more of them. I actually think I should hang this up higher, but when I tried to hang it on this hook, it kind of is slanted and maybe the bees don't care, but I thought they might. But anyway, here's also my composting area. Um, these down here are lettuce. Those are some peppers. Those are actually sunflowers. And I still have some pepper plants growing. Mostly it's the cucumbers. The cucumbers are thriving. They're taking over my yard. Um, but I'm very okay with that. I love cucumbers. I might learn to pickle. I am trying to, I don't know what the word is, like tell the vine it can um, go up. Like, come on. You know what I mean? I'm like trying to teach its coils that it can um, come up here, I guess. There, maybe that'll help. Uh, who knows? I'll, I'll give you guys updates in a little bit to see if they actually grow higher. Oh, see, it already fell. Um, but more soon. Hey everyone, it is now the end of, it is the end of July and I never filmed the wrap up for my reading, this reading vlog slash book exchange with Olive and I finally finished Buzz by Thor Hansen. And first off, fun fact, I actually have Thor Hansen's other book, Seeds, which is the spring box for Read It and Eat. So it's actually really cool that I got to read a book on his backlist, um, which makes me very excited to see what else he's written. So that was cool. Second thing is I read this book um, actually in a day because I was two weeks ago I was flying for my first time to the Chicago office for work and I started this as an audiobook. It was only about six hours and then it speeds up as you listen to it as it's faster. And um, that flight was delayed. Oh my gosh, almost over four hours to get home. And I remember being in the airport, reading, mask on, and um, I we've been there for hours, you know, and I've like made there's a girl across from me who's been there longer than me. A couple sits down um, and they look at me and I had finally like just taken my headphones off or something because um, I was just trying to drown out the noise. And they asked me all about the book. Like they were like, I'm really sorry to bother you, but like you're reading and I, I just want to know like, is it a good book? Do you like it? I don't know a lot about bees. And I ended up talking to this random couple for like 45 minutes about this book. So Olive, you made me some great airport friends. Uh, and it, it is a wonderful book. This book is very much like, not the history of books, but it's much more of a scientific nature writing approach to books. So it does, Thor Hansen writes from first person perspective and it's about the things that he learns, but it's so informative. Like I didn't even, I've read now this t 
two, three books on bees. I never paid attention to the different types of bees there were, like bees that live in sand, bees that dig, leaf cutter bees. And now I can kind of understand the difference between a bee and a wasp, how a wasp has a smooth texture because it's not trying to collect pollen for honey versus honey bees are fuzzy, they, they're big and fuzzy, um, because they are trying to collect the pollen naturally. So that was like a very cool moment for me to actually recognize this. And as you guys saw in earlier videos and clips in this video, um, I did buy a bee hotel for my backyard and I have seen the bees fertilize my backyard. I have been collecting produce every week. I'll put a picture here. My cucumbers are over up, they each weigh over a pound, which is insane for a cucumber. I'm super excited. I just harvested lettuce. Um, and I really like Thor Hansen's book. First off, also the cover is just striking. I really, I don't, it's a very simple cover, but I really like it. I'm happy to have it on my shelf. It also has um, like a matte finish for the book. It has some kind of texture to it. And I wish I could describe what it was, um, but it was really fun. And what I also love is that the author explains also bee and bug gathering and the perspective of his own child, his own son, learning to love bees and growing up in natural uh, curiosity. And I think it is an interesting thing that we're, I grew up being terrified of bees because I was told that they would sting me. And meanwhile, his son is so excited and proactive and wants a bee to make a hive near his house to create honey naturally. Um, I would love that too. I totally killed a wasp nest that was growing in my shed though. So it, it was really, really fun. And it's interesting that bees evolved from wasps. Wasps are naturally predators. They're trying to eat other insects, their larvae, etc. And then some wasps that started to accidentally collect pollen realized, oh, I can eat pollen and this, this pure glucose thing called honey. And they have bees evolved from there. It was also interesting to learn that it's very hard to find bee skeletons perfectly preserved, unless usually I think they're fossilized in amber, I believe is what the book said. Um, oh my gosh, the side of the book is also a bee. It is so cool. So this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this book. Putting the book side by side, Olive, thank you so much for giving me two very different books to read in the nonfiction space, a food memoir, Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, Buzz by Thor Hansen. Two totally different books on the spectrum, and I like them both for two very different reasons. I love being introduced to Russian food, Soviet food. I know how much Olive loves Russian literature and Russian culture, and it really felt cool to get an inside peek of the world that Olive adores so much. Um, I really want to learn how to make some of these dishes in some capacity. There are recipes in the back of the book, so maybe I can convince Dan to make something with me. I always slightly struggle to make things like gluten, uh, gluten free for me, but I digress. This makes me want to know why there's not more conversations about Rus Russian cuisine. And that's like something like I'm going to go to um, all of my YouTube, favorite YouTube channels where I learn about food history and probably go try and find more about this. What I loved about Buzz is it reinforces my desire to help in conservation and preservation of bees and how that there are simple things you can do as a regular person in your backyard, whether that's planting flowers, flowering flowers, um, or vegetables that bloom flowers to help with pollination, putting up a bee hotel, or just not immediately trying to swat a bee every time you see it, because it could be a different type of bee. It could be a leaf cutter bee that doesn't look like a bumblebee, but it's not a wasp. Anyway. Thank you so, so much to Olive, over to Book Olive. This book exchange has been so much fun. I already finished the mints that were in the box that she sent me, and I'm actually going to try the honey she sent me in a different video, So, because I have a book duo about bees, and I actually have honey from four different regions of the United States that I want to taste to see if I can actually taste the difference. Because in this book, they talk about how the terroir of wine, for example, terroir, the soil, the minerals really impacts wine. Well, the same thing can happen with honey. So I'm gonna go try them separately for a book duos slash read and discover video because again, I sent all of a book about bees called Honey and Venom. And I actually read this one too so that I could do the compare and contrast. The spice rub I definitely have used on chicken, which I did not film. I don't think anyone wanted to watch me film some chicken for dinner, um, but this was so much fun. I really hope Olive will humor me. We can do one again later in the year. Maybe we can do it twice a year. Am I too needy? 
If anyone else would love to do a book box exchange like this, please hit me up in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. I am so about these book exchanges and these vlogs. It has been an honor and so much fun. And I hope I, wrong book to be holding up for the ending. I really hope I did all of justice. Let me know what you think about both of these books and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.